mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Is that uh, is that something you? Uh, how often do you do you cut and apply versus making it all you know brushwork? Yeah, that. Um, so that has it's like that's a small smaller kind of ongoing series I've been doing for a couple of years now where um, where I start. Um, I guess that particular one that, that yeah is on the wall is uh, it's actually the leftover scraps from um, a small installation I did when I was in a residency uh, last year when I was in Vermont and uh, I was playing with kind of cutting up a painting and and I just kind of scattered it around my studio right. and was uh, and, um, sticking in the, the studio had all these like weird little cracks in the walls and um, little little flaws or whatever. So I was making these paintings on canvas, cutting them up, and then sliding them into the cracks in the wall, and nice. and um, kind of uh, thinking about a new way of of uh, almost taking the paintings now back into installation. I went from installation to paintings. Right. So I'm going back into installation with them. And so, anyways, I was yeah, I was in Vermont fiddling with that, and. Um, and then I come back to my studio and a few months later, I just open up the box of, so all the stuff I'd taken there fit into a suitcase and I had all the boxes here in my studio and had all these scraps and I just like decided I was going to turn those scraps back into a painting. And, right. and so, yeah, those are, those are them. I just kind of, I collaged them, collaged yeah. them together on, on, onto the canvas. And, uh, and, and again, it's like, so it's a, obviously meant to be this kind of singular thing, but it, it kind of points back I mean, one thing to the to the history of that particular piece where those elements were all once in an installation, but it has again that kind of just a little bit of that physicality yeah. to it um, that that some of the more sculptural crumpled things have as well. Sure. So tell me uh, tell me about that residency because that's you know uh, a lot of people apply for for that residency that it's pretty w- well respected. Uh, so tell me about your time up at uh, Vermont. Um, yeah. So Vermont Vermont Studio Center. Um, I was there actually exactly a year ago mm-hmm. uh, that I started. Um, um, but yeah, it was, gosh, there was 50, I think there's like 50 mm-hmm. residents there at a time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, I mean, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, yeah. I met some really, met some really great people. And uh, it's certainly the most dedicated consistent studio time I've had since I was a graduate student and maybe even in that case it was even more intensive than when I was a graduate student because mm-hmm. you have you know you have like zero uh responsibilities you like you don't have I mean you do you do work there for the residency uh mm-hmm. but there was no like yeah there's no worrying about going to have your have whatever your, your job is that you have to go and do or even mm-hmm. your your uh, social life and all those things just go uh, go away other than of course you know the social interaction with the other residents there and so right it was uh i was able to really just kind of um dive in and just kind of explore um some things i probably wouldn't have otherwise had done and and i went into it with a um i didn't have a specific project in mind right um, a specific body of work I was trying to execute, which some people do. Uh, a lot of people there had some very specific things they wanted to get, wanted to accomplish. And I was like, well, I'm just going to fit as much stuff into the suitcase as I can. And, uh, and I'm just going to see what happens. And like, so I think I spent the first day, you know, I mean, on one hand it was kind of, it was a little daunting um, at first where you, you just, here's your studio and like they just there there you are and they give you this room and it was uh like i don't know twice as big as as the studio that we're in right now mm-hmm. um and it's just i mean it's barren it's just a white white room a couple tables like and, and then i'm just sitting in there i'm like well what am i gonna do like because <laughs> i didn't have a, <laughs> i didn't say no and then um and then yeah i just i and again i'm like just like looking at the room and and it's the 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 walls were you could see the four by eight foot sheets that made up the paneling mm-hmm. of the walls and some of them were mudded over but other ones were just the raw seams were there some of them were just like cracks that kind of emerged from the history of this building and that's where I you know I think I so I had I had a a 
some canvas I'd already primed, I'd already gessoed and uh-huh. had that in my bag. I had my paint in my bag, but then I did also have random scraps and debris right. um, that I was like threw in the bag like, oh, well, this can help me go and do something. And that's when I just walked over and just started kind of sticking it into these little cracks in the in the wall. And anyways, and it just it kind of grew from there and um, allowed me to kind of uh, play with, and this is something that... Um, is in is currently in my in my brain at the last show I did and the next couple things I have mm-hmm. are uh, playing with the, having making paintings but making paintings elements in an installation and having paintings kind of fall apart and respond to a space and um, so that that the residency really helped me kind of start to think about those ideas and um, had a couple nice studio visits from visiting artists that Mm -hmm. again had some really nice conversation with and that was something i certainly haven't had since since i was a graduate student i of course have my um have my my studio mates who you know Uh we we have conversations stuff like that but you know very different when it's um someone who i haven't didn't have a previous uh uh social relationship with in any capacity so having conversations with those with those visiting artists was great and the other the other residents them, themselves, of course, uh, it was just a, uh, uh, a a very positive experience, and sure. would certainly recommend it to, to other people to do. and And I can't wait to do uh, to do future future residencies. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so when you when you seek feedback from from uh, from others, mm-hmm. um, how do you filter that out? Are you uh, I mean, do, who do you think is more candid? Uh, somebody you share a studio with, like here, or uh, a stranger mm. that's uh, coming into your residency? And yeah, uh, well, it's interesting. Like, so on one hand, the the strangers, so to speak, they don't know my work previously, so they can look at it um, maybe more objectively mm-hmm. in terms of just responding to what they're seeing without the baggage of knowing my other work. Um, which on one hand, was, those conversations were really nice because it did, I get very kind of like locked down where I'm, you know, working primarily acrylic on canvas these days, even when I am cutting it up and making an installation. And mm-hmm. then, and so obvious things when I'm talking to someone who's new to the work, well, they're like, well, why aren't you using this material or that material? Which mm-hmm. on one hand, I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, why aren't I doing that? <laughs> um, but then, but then it's also, it's like, well, no, I like it that it all points back to this very specific media material and the history of those things and Mm -hmm. um so but anyways it's nice to have those conversations where they don't they don't have that familiarity with the work so it it can lead to other other discussions and and other kind of artists uh works can come up and then versus yeah my my studio mates who uh most of which i've i've known uh since graduate school so we and we've we've worked many of us have worked together previously on on projects and uh so we have a familiarity with with our with our histories and and um, so they respond to to works with uh, I guess which is yeah. that knowledge yeah. So when you when you experiment, do you feel like you can <clears throat> just kind of uh, free fall out into something totally new, or do you feel like you need to experiment within the bounds of kind of this logical progression of where you've come from? Yeah, I mean the work. I haven't. Yeah, I haven't done anything that has felt like a like a radical departure um, in quite some time. You know, I'm not. Yeah, certainly not making paintings of recognizable things from the world or something like that. Uh, so everything does exist within a within a certain realm. But I do like. I'll come and play. Like I have this weird chair thing <laughs> that I made, and that was like that was maybe two years ago, uh-huh. but. And I still like I only made two pieces in this little very small body of work, but where I was like intersecting paintings with pieces of furniture. And again, I was thinking about space and obviously mm-hmm. furniture and its relationship to an architectural space and the, sure and how to uh, how to just kind of further play with play okay. with those ideas is where that work came from. And it's something I want to keep working. With, but that's like the most you know radical. Where it's like it's like oh, it's more like a, an actual sculpture almost that I, sure. that I made that I made there. And, uh, um, but so yeah, any of my, any of those little avenues of exploration, I feel like are just, you know, small little pivots one way or the other, I guess. And, uh, 
and I do and again yeah there there are all these things kind of rattling around and sometimes it does get a little I have to you know decide what it is I want to work on at the moment and I uh I talk to people about this a lot where it's like I go uh I really do like when I was in Vermont and when I and over the summers since I'm a professor I get you know summers which generally I don't don't have to teach and it allows for ample mm-hmm. studio time and so I do like to be able to just kind of mess around and make weird you know pieces of furniture or whatever um but I I also though really enjoy just making these like paintings um and so I have to kind of grapple with that sometimes um of what it is I want to do and and sometimes like the while I love the process of making the painting and figuring out how it's going to turn out while I say like I you know I, I, I make them in the computer there's still a kind of a sense of discovery as the work is being made and um by the time I I finish those it's like oh cool I did this thing and then I like wrap it up and throw it in a box and it goes and, and over in storage or whatever and then it's like okay well that was that and right um so that i don't know that it's uh it's hard to, to sometimes you know uh navigate what it is that i want to i want to do but i have so many kind of different things and right yeah absolutely so where do you teach uh i teach at uh, Tarleton State University, it's down in Stephenville. Oh yeah. yeah, about an hour outside of town here, and uh, yeah, been down there a few years. Uh, we have a we have a growing art program down there, and uh, it's uh, it's a nice place to be. Um, I choose to uh, choose to not live choose to not live there. Uh, it's a different different walk of. <laughs> different lifestyle down there that doesn't right. necessarily suit my interests but sure. um well uh i think rodeo is big in yes Carleton. yes it is yes we have a rodeo team um that absolutely is a thing uh we uh that and that's uh yeah it's a big it's a big thing down there i've had so the students down there by and large um great wonderful kids uh mm-hmm. but many of them are from small town texas uh rural places and um so they're very used to this uh Mm -hmm. that atmosphere and and stuff and i've had i've had classes where i had a a member i'm assuming he's on the rodeo team was in said class and he walks in to class with chaps on one day and i'm like looking like what is happening right now i've never seen that in my life and uh and then the students though they don't bat an eye it's like oh this is normal this is fine like okay that's cool whatever um (laughs) So yeah, it's a really interesting place, and uh, so I like to think of it. There's you know there's a nice uh, there's a nice uh, dialogue between my students and I where I right. um, expose them perhaps to to things that they have never never seen before, uh, and they too though mm-hmm. give me that opportunity of uh, of exposing me to right. parts of Texas. Uh, you know, I grew up in Texas. I've lived here my entire life, right. but. Um, but lots of my, my suburban upbringings right. is very different than <laughs> uh, than rural Texas. Uh, yeah, and uh, but but yeah, so that's yeah, that's where I that's where I teach. Yeah. So uh, do you find that teaching, just even having the words coming out of your mouth when you're teaching, uh, affects your art making process? Because I mean, I I, I te- I'm teaching high schoolers, but you know, uh-huh. I find that you know, teaching kind of holds you accountable because, you know, you know, when you start, you know, kind of reconciling the words coming out of your mouth with your own practice, you know, at some point you're like, you know what, maybe, maybe, wait a minute, maybe I'm not putting that into practice the way I should. I mean, do you ever yeah. have those moments in, in the classroom where? Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I can think of specific discoveries that happen from teaching that end up in my work but um i mean being a being a teacher and the longer that i've the longer i've done it um the more uh i don't know the more comfortable with the sound of my own voice i get Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) right which uh 
I always tended to be a pretty shy person growing up and, you know, very, very shy person growing up. And then um, as a as a requirement of the job, 